Okay. Hello, welcome to episode 29 of Little Bobbins Knits. My name is Danny, and you can find me on Ravelry and Instagram as Little Bobbins. We have a Ravelry group which you can find by searching Little Bobbins Knits in the groups tab on Ravelry. And show notes for the podcast can be found at littlebobbins.co.uk. So thank you so much for being here today and thank you so much for the lovely people who got in touch over the last few weeks now I think it is. I really appreciate how lovely and kind you are so thank you. Um, It's been quite a few weeks now and if I just have a week away from podcasting When I try and record again, it feels like I've never done it before. So, being about three weeks, this feels most peculiar. So I've decided to just go with it, see what happens. And I haven't written any notes because I felt like that was going to be confusing. So, yeah, we'll just see what happens. I've got some works in progress to show you. There's a little bobbin. Oh. So cute. I have a kind of finished object. I have quite a few lovely things. My justification is it's been a while and I'm also going to use the birthday month defence before we even get into that. It's just there looking at me so... (laughs) Yeah, there'll be quite a big lovely thing section. And we'll also announce a new giveaway, which is very exciting. So let's get started. I'll just work my way along the row. So in my lovely bag from Fondant Fibre, you good boy, I have my campsite shawl by Alicia Plummer. I'm knitting this for my mum. It's going to be her meditation shawl. It's such a lovely, cosy shawl. Oh, you're going to lie there. Good boy. Now, the needle's too short for it, so you won't be able to see it fully, but it's grown quite a bit. I'm now on the rib section, so the very last section. And I don't know if you were around when I was doing my first campsite that I knit for me. I made a mistake on that thing extremely frequently. It didn't sort of ruin my enjoyment of it, I really really enjoyed the project, but somehow I think because it's quite a simple lace pattern that my brain kind of switches off and I assume I know what I'm doing, I just sort of happily knitting away. So I kept making mistakes. But this one I didn't make any mistakes, which I thought was magical. So it has sort of I think three different chart patterns and the eyelets just get a bit more frequent as you go down the shawl and now there'll be a nice big thick rib at the end which finishes it off really nicely. You off Bob. I'm knitting this in Rowan Alpaca colour colour 75. I've got a couple of skeins left and that much of a ball so I might try and make the rib quite long without making it look too unbalanced. I think you're (coughs) advised for about an inch and a half. It's a free pattern on Ravelry. It was published through Pom Pom Quarterly blog. It's a really lovely pattern. I did want to get it finished before it got too hot because alpaca is so, such a warm fibre. And it looks like I might do that, which is exciting. That bag's from Fondant Fibre, I'm not sure if I mentioned that. Oh! Been very untidy lately. I think because I've been quite busy, I tend to just put things in places that they don't actually belong just to have them be put away. <laughs> In this little bag from Fondant Fibre, I 
I have my Pebble Beach. The Pebble Beach is by Helen Stewart of the Curious Handmade podcast and designer behind the Curious Handmade patterns. She's bought out three sizes of Pebble Beach. Originally it was just in one shawlette size that you knit with fingering weight and now it's got two more sizes added to that. One in sort of a heavy lace weight and one in lace weight. And I've been knitting the lace weight one. I had no idea I would be so slow knitting lace or lace weight yarn. The pattern is lovely. It's just a really nice, quite simple and the way it's written is really clear and user friendly and lovely. It's a really lovely project. If I'd been knitting this in fingering weight, I think I would be done by now. But for some reason, I'm just so slow with lace weight. Don't have a clue why that is. But I'm 70% through the shawl now, I think. Helen's patterns have this brilliant sort of checklist type system and you've got your percentages all down the side so you can really keep track of how much you've knit which I really like I find it really motivating and you can use that to sort of spur you on to keep going I'm knitting this out of the uncommon thread this is the heavenly lace which is a lovely alpaca and cashmere blend and this is in the salty air colorway it's a gorgeous sort of teal sort of green blue it's very beautiful yarn and I'm knitting it on my carbons I'm using a 3.75 millimeter yeah so I'm still going on this I'm just amazed at how slow I am with lace weight though who'd have known but luckily it's a very enjoyable project and I'm so excited to see it blocked because it's just going to change so much. I'm hoping I've got enough floor space actually because I think it's going to be huge. But yeah, that's a very, very lovely knit. And the extended pattern is all out now so all three sizes have been released. So, my next work in progress, in my lovely bag from Himiko, it's one of my favourites, so cute. Hmm, have I forgotten the name of these socks? Maybe. This is why I usually write notes, so I don't forget things. Okay, anyway, I'm not sure. I'm knitting in the Opal Harmony got primarily because of the cute elephants on the ball band. I love them. But luckily it's lovely colours too. And I think these are the charade socks. I can't remember who designed the pattern, so I'll put that all in the show notes. I think I know, but then it might be the wrong name, so it's probably best if I don't say anything at all. But I do love how these socks are coming out. sort of just add a tiny little bit of interest which is nice I think I'm finding it quite a slow pattern maybe I'm just slow at the moment maybe I just need to come to terms with that but I'm finding it quite a slow pattern it doesn't grow very quickly and it's quite dense I think these are going to be for my mum but yeah it's quite a dense knit so yeah but it's it's a fun pattern because every other row you don't do anything, you just knit round plain and then you have a bit of interest on the row in between, which I always like. So yes, I think they're the charade socks but I will pop that in the show notes. I think I've made a project page. <sighs> Disorganised. They were supposed to be in there, not in the other bag. I'm just going to have a sip of my tea. I'm having a lovely peach tea. 
I got a lovely package from Susan Rister1313 and she sent me some oh, completely lovely peach tea. I love peach, such a nice flavour. It's so tasty, it smells so good and it tastes so good. Mm. My next work in progress is in this lovely little bag. This is new. Um, a couple of towns over from us is a town, or would it be classed as a village? I'm not sure, but it's called Wendover. And it's really lovely. It's quite a small place and Mum and I quite like to go over there every so often. There's a lovely antique shop. <clears throat> There's a lovely hot chocolate place that is just... They do these tiny cups of just chocolate. Oh, they're delicious. And all sorts of handmade chocolate and Wendover waffles which are just yummy. It's really lovely. And there's also a little road. It's not a road. I'm terrible at explaining stuff today. It's just a little nook. And in the nook are some independent shops. There's a gallery shop which sells lovely things. They've got local artists work and local craftspeople's work and paintings. And there's this other shop that is it's just like a little hole in the wall and there's this woman in there who sells such beautiful fabric things. She makes lots of bags out of vintage tea towels. That's what this is. It's so... I just... I love them. I've wanted one for such a long time and I'm so thrilled to have one. It's got a lovely little pocket there. And um, I just love this fabric. It's because you can feel it's been used and it's been loved and it's been softened over that time of use and love and it's just I I really like old things because I just feel like they've got so much more character you can you can just feel the life behind them the life that they've already had anyway so yes I've got this lovely little bag that I'm keeping one of my projects in I have another one but it's just over there so maybe I'll show you that another time her shop is called Liberty Rose. She does have an Etsy shop. I'm not sure how I'm not sure how full it is or anything, but her work is absolutely beautiful. I also got a lovely little lavender pillow from her. It just smells gorgeous. It's got a little screen print on there. And I think it's of I can't remember because I thought it was a dog and a little boy asleep in bed. But then I think that this is a hill, and that's a little building, so... Oh, they might be in a boat. Yeah. But it's lovely anyway. It's lovely soft linen, and... Oh, it smells gorgeous. So yeah, I'll put links to her shop in the show notes, just in case there's... some stuff in there. This is the Morning Mist top by Annie Rowden, not sure how you pronounce her name, Rowden or Rowden, by Annie Claire, anyway, on Instagram, and Ravelry, and it's a lovely top with this lace panel at the back, over the shoulders, like that, and then the rest is just plain, and I just fell in love with it when I saw it, like, obsessive love. I was thinking about all variations of yarns that I could use. I was fantasising about some the Uncommon Thread DK. This was going to be one of the speckled colours and then I was going to use just a plain grey or pink or something for the body of the top. But then I worked it out and it would have been £80 plus for a sleeveless top and I thought no I can't really stretch to that. As beautiful as it would have been, I just can't stretch to that. Not, not at the moment, anyway. 
So I looked in my stash instead and I found a ball of this. This is Rowan Baby Merino and Silk. Yeah, Baby Merino Silk DK. And I don't think that this is really going to be the best choice for the top because it's quite a woolly. It's not woolly, but it's got quite a lot of... It's very, very soft and I think it might be quite warm. So I'm not sure it's going to be the best yarn for a summer top, but it was in my stash and I had to cast on. It was, it was an uncontrollable thing. I'm not sure that this is the colour that I would have chosen, really, but I just had to cast it on. So <laughs> this is what it will be made out of. And then I've got this colour pink for the body which I think is really pretty. It's sort of a mild sort of yarn, which will add a bit of depth, which will be nice. So yes, I'm, I thoroughly enjoyed knitting this. The lace is very, very simple, intuitive. You know, as soon as you've gone wrong, you know, and you can just pop a few stitches back and sort it out. And I learned something new in this as well, and I love that. One of the reasons I really love knitting from patterns is you so often learn something new that you'll then use again and again in other patterns when it's not necessarily suggested. In this pattern, there was a provisional cast on. Usually I would use a crochet chain cast on where you crochet around a needle and I really like that technique, it's really, really useful. But this one, you... I'll put a link to the tutorial in the show notes, but you sort of um, cast on over a needle and an auxiliary yarn. But instead of using an auxiliary yarn, which you would then have to pick up the stitches of, I cast on over a needle and an interchangeable needle cord. So then when it came to the time that I had to pick up those stitches, I didn't have any stitches to pick up, I could just pop an interchangeable needle on the end of the cord and knit along, which I just thought was magic. I absolutely love that technique and whenever I need to do a provisional cast on again, I think I'll do that. And it was such a quick way to cast on as well. I'm completely smitten with that technique now. So I would really recommend the Morning Mist pattern. It's got such an interesting construction as well. So I'm so excited. I've got to block this bit and work out whether it's going to be the right size. I didn't swatch in my haste to begin. So I might have to knit this whole thing again. But that's fine because it was such a lovely lace pattern to knit. I'm already planning three more of these tops. And I don't even know if the style is going to suit me. So... But sometimes you just have to knit things, or sometimes I just love knitting things because the knitting of them is so fun, even if they're not going to be the most practical or suit me at all. <laughs> so that's all my works in progress. That's actually more than I thought I had. Hmm. I have one finished object. This is the Blom Shawl by Melody of Mandarines blog podcast and designer behind the Mandarines patterns. And I test knit this for Melody. And it's all finished. But I haven't been able to block it because we've had workmen here and they have just been making dust clouds and traipsing in and out over the place that I would block things. So I haven't been able to, unfortunately. But this shawl is beautiful. The pattern's out now, so do go and have a look. But it's just lovely and I really, really enjoyed the knitting of this. It's got a lovely eyelet section and then it's got these lovely flowers 
and they were just so much fun to do. And then it's got a lovely Pico bind off, which I always really love. I think Pico bind offs just add a real sort of touch of femininity to a shawl, and I, I really really like that. This is knit out of the rosy green wool. I don't know if I've got a ball band. Hopefully we'll be back to regular programming next week and I'll be organised and have notes and ball bands and things like that. But I know that this was a Merino and Manx, La Manx Lockton blend and it was so beautiful to work with. I just enjoyed it so much. And the colour is beautiful and I've just realised it's awfully similar to this. <laughs> Oh dear. Okay. I don't know about you, but I go through phases with my colours and everything looks quite similar sometimes. But it's a beautiful, beautiful shawl. And yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing the ones that other people knit up. Because it's just, it's a really fun knit. And I completely love doing these flowers. Really fun. So yes, workmen have gone now. Hopefully they won't return for any reason, um, so I'll be able to block this out. I went down a needle size for my shawl because I just felt like the yarn worked better at that gauge. And it has meant that mine's a bit smaller than Melody's, but I think when I block it out it will be a really great size. So. Looking forward to doing that. This yarn is so soft, just beautiful. Rosy green wool. So that's my only finished object in three weeks, <laughs> which is quite unheard of actually. I usually finish stuff with more frequency, but I think the things I've been knitting have been a bit more long term projects and. So I haven't. So, shall we begin? Lovely things. Okay, I've just got stuff in bags here. So, I haven't sort of made any order to this. So we'll just see what what I grab. This bag is from Mum and. I had a little Wendover adventure where I got my lovely little tea towel bag. And we found a new fabric shop, which was so exciting. We go there quite frequently, but we have never seen this fabric shop before. We were just wandering down the road and mum spotted some little cut out sewing machines along a window. And we had to go and investigate. And there's a little fabric shop above another shop, which was an extremely happy find. It's called the Plain Stitch Workroom. They do workshops there and they sell fabric. And so I picked up a few pieces of fabric. It's been there for a year and goodness only knows how many times Mum and I would have been to Wendover in the last year. It would have been quite a few, but we've just never spotted it. These fabrics are for me to do something fun with. I love these little I just think these are lovely. It's so cute. And I had a plan for this, but I bought it about three weeks ago and I can't remember what that plan was. I'm sure it will come back to me. And then I also got this one because I thought that would make really cute DPN cosies. I've got some lovely grey poppers that I just think would be perfect with that. I thought that was so cute. So that was a very happy find. And thank you so much to everyone who came to the shop on Saturday and bought DPN cosies. It was so exciting and I've sent them all out now so hopefully they'll be with you very soon but yeah thank you very much. I also got a lovely package from 
Vicky. And how do you pronounce that? Berenvula? Maybe you can tell me, Vicky. But it's berenvula.de. She has a lovely yarn shop. She opened it just a few weeks ago and it was really fun watching her sort of prepare for the opening and on Instagram. It was really exciting. And I had to go and buy some yarn. I chose this one. Oh, aren't the colours just gorgeous? It's got a bit of sort of tan in there too. Tan, brown, lilac and then it's sort of dark, darker lilac and this is just sort of a really sort of like it's just been touched with a tiny bit of lilac. This is the Faded Vintage colourway and it's a wool and nylon blend. I just think it's beautiful. And then Vicky very, very kindly sent me some extra yarn to play with, which I just thought was very, very kind of her. So this is the same blend and this is called Fancy Cocktail. And it's pinks and peaches and just edible looking. It's beautiful. Oh, so I'm very excited to play with that. And she also sent me this one. This one's called Magnolia. And you know, I can't put my finger on that colour. It's sort of a mauve, I think. And then there's this vivid green. I can't wait to see how this is going to knit up. It's just going to be so exciting. Yeah, I think mauve. Sort of a very, very light plum. And this one, yeah, it's called Magnolia. I think I just said that. So they're beautiful. Thank you so much, Vicky, for my lovely extra goodies. And yeah, do go and have a look at her shop because it's beautiful. And the colours. I love her colour names and all of her little... Uh, different colourways are just so exciting. Really, really fun. I also got a package from Anna at Gregoria Fibres. I ordered some yarn and a couple of days later I got a package and I saw it was from Anna and I thought, gosh, that's quick. But it turns out she'd sent me a present which was just so lovely of her. Gregoria Fibres uses all natural dyes. This is the scheme that Anna sent me. It's 100% merino and it's dyed with cochineal. And it's a beautiful, beautiful colour. I think if the colour that you can see is the same colour that I can see on the screen, it's a much more um, rich pink than that. It's not a hot pink. It's sort of a really rich, magenta, beautiful colour. It's really lovely. So thank you so much for that, Anna. I have been saving this to show you, because it's so pretty. But I have been itching to cast on the Vajur Shawl by Isabel. It's fluffy fibres. It is such a beautiful shawl. It's got a lovely plain section and then it's got a lovely applied lace edging and it's just beautiful and the colour that Isabel has knit it in is gorgeous. It's from some Villain Vine yarns and it's just dreamy. But I was thinking that I'd knit it with this. I've been plotting with Deb, who's Tink Hickman, because she really wants to cast it on as well. She has now. It's so exciting. Hers just looks beautiful. And we were chatting about the colours that we planned to knit it in, and we both picked pink and grey. <laughs> so Deb's gone with grey, so I think I'll go with pink, so we get to see both variations of our visions for it. So, But yeah, it's a beautiful pattern, so do go and have a look if you haven't seen it already. The Vajur Shawl by Isabel, of Fluffy Fibres podcast, which is one of my favourites. So that's beautiful yarn and that came with a lovely little mini scheme which is dyed with logwood. These colours that you get from natural dyes, aren't they just incredible? They're... 
I think people have a misconception. I think I certainly did before I got more, um, before I saw more uh, dyed work with natural dyes. But I thought they'd be quite wishy-washy and, but I probably quite like that actually. Um, but I thought they'd be not this sort of vivid hit of colour like this. It's just amazing what you can get from natural dyes. She also sent me a lovely stash of tea bags, which is very exciting. It's her card, gregoriafibers.com. And she sent me some lovely buttons. Little wooden buttons. A few different sizes. And they're just gorgeous. I'm looking forward to adding those to a project. The yarn I ordered from Anna was this. I saw her show this on her Instagram and then proceeded to stalk her shop until this was in there. This was dyed with cabbage, black cabbage I think, I think she said. It's on a lovely tweedy base. Oh, look at those tweedy flecks. And it is the most gorgeous sage green colour. It's beautiful. Cabbage. I just think it's magic. And this was dyed with black cap, black carrot. Little mini skein. Just amazing. Oh, I love it. So yes, stash has been enhanced. Okay. Onto the basket. I'll put links to everything that I talk about in the show notes because. It's quite a lot of stuff. <laughs> I saw Fondant Fibre was having an update and I love I love Fondant Fibre. I love Deb. I think that she's she's not only extremely kind and lovely, but I just love her her work with colour, with fibre. It's really inspiring and really exciting. So I saw she was having an update and had to go over and pick up a few things. Usually I get fibre and project bags from fondant fibre but I wanted to get some yarn this time so I got a couple in her sparkly base. This is her spangle. <laughs> it's not such a fun name. It's Superwash Merino, Nylon and Stellina. This is the Shield Maiden wannabe. I just thought that was so much fun, I just couldn't resist. There are all the colours in here, there's green, purple, orange, brown. Oh, it's just, it is so much fun. I think that's a pair of socks for me, I think really like it. I also got this one. This is also on the spangle base. I think spangle's the funnest word I've said all day. And this is in her jazz colourway that she is dyed, dedicated to her precious dog. Which I had to have a skein of. I think that might be socks for mum. And I also got this one, this is Gunpowder, this is Hardy High Twist, Superwash Merino and Nylon. And I just love this, look at those flecks of black. I think this will be Socks for David. It's just really lovely. I'm, yeah, I really, really love this. The yarn's very soft too. And it came with a lovely sample, oh a cute little stitch marker, lovely sample of her Cherry Bakewell fibre which is the prettiest thing and a little mini skein of Vintage Tulle which is so pretty as well so I can't wait to knit that in my blanket. That's on, that's got a gold Stellina running through it. The Spangle, that's silver. 
Yeah, and that one's silver too, but that one's gold. And Deb also sent along, are you ready for this? A scheme to give away on the podcast. So we'll have this as a giveaway in a little while. We've just we've got one today and I think we've got another one coming up and then we'll do this one. And she's written on it, not for the faint hearted. And I think that is very accurate. <laughs> this is called Tweety Pie. Wow, look at that. That is just amazing. And that is exactly Tweety Pie, isn't it? This is Spangle Gold, Superwash Merino Nylon and Stellina. It's not quite as bright as I can see on my screen, but it is extremely bright. It will wake you up. It's fantastic. So thank you so much, Deb. Really, really appreciate that. So remember, we're using the birthday month defence with this and just seeing it piling up. It's been all in bags ready to show you. So, yeah. And I think last time I spoke to you, I was saying that I... I was trying not to buy yarn, so it clearly went by the wayside. Now this, oh, I'm in love with this. This is from British Bee Knits. British Bee Knits is on Etsy. And this is her I Touch the Fire and It Freezes Me self-striping sock yarn. If you're a Buffy fan, just hearing that will probably mean that you're singing along now. <laughs> I have such a difficulty not singing when I say that. And it's just this fantastic... Oh, it's just fantastic colours. Uh, Knitting Mummy on Instagram, who I think is brilliant, knit these socks out of these, out of this yarn, and they are just so fantastic that I desperately wanted some. And I absolutely love it. And Rebecca of British Bee Knits also sent me these cute stitch markers. I spell out my name. That's not working, is it? Oh! <laughs> Let's spell out my name. And there's some vampire teeth. Which I just think is brilliant. A little tea bag. A little lollipop. So, And they're all ready for me to knit concurrently which I thought was very, very kind, because usually she uh, winds them into one big ball. But she did that for me, so I, I was just so touched by that. It's, it's lovely. So thank you so much, Rebecca. What else have we got here, then? So, on Saturday, Mum and I went to I Knit Fandango was in London. We hadn't expected to go really. I just, um, no, we didn't sort of have a plan. It was all very last minute. But I'm so pleased we did go. We made it a sort of birthday celebration and got the train up and it was, it was an absolutely wonderful day. And I got to meet some very, very lovely people who watch the podcast, and I was just thrilled to meet you. Thank you so much for coming to say hello. And I got to meet Alex, who's Time to Sew, and we've been chatting on Instagram for ages now, so it was really lovely to actually meet Alex in person. So, knitting events, they're so... They're just so brilliant, aren't they? You get to meet lovely people, touch lovely yarn, maybe bring some home, and just being around all of those people who share the same passion as you, it's just so enriching, I think. So it was a really fun day. And I got a few things that I can show you here, but I also got some birthday prezzies, so I'll probably show you them next week. Um, my birthday is on Monday, which is a bank holiday, so I'll probably record on Tuesday. So I'll be able to show you them then. So, I'm just sorting through this bag. Let's have a look. Okay. One of the things I got was this pattern for an axolotl. <laughs> I just think that's so cute. This is from Max's World. I think it's maxsworld.com. 
She had some great patterns, but this axolotl just stole my heart. Maxisworld.co.uk I've always wanted an axolotl. I just think they're fascinating creatures. But I haven't got anywhere to keep one, so I'm going to have to knit one. That's just going to have to do. I also got a skein of... Oh, now I meant to try and translate these before I started. Uh, Bullmiser was there, and so I was very drawn to this fun scheme. I think this is going to be socks for mum because it's more her colours than it is mine. But I just thought it was very, very interesting. I love these delicate colours in the shifts between the dark colours and the light colours. I just think they're beautiful. So this is a twin, which is a wool and polyamide blend. And the colourway, ah, oh, I did translate this one. This is stalk, I believe. So, clapper stalk. I don't know how you say it in German. All of the Volmeiser was seconds. So this one has got an F on it, which means that the dye job isn't quite as it should be. So it meant that, oh, look at that section. I love that section. So it meant that they were cheaper than they ordinarily would be. Which is nice because I haven't tried Volmeiser before. Actually I think I tried a little bit. I think Amelia sent me a little mini scheme for my blanket which is very lovely. But I haven't tried a full scheme so that would be nice. I reckon my camera is going to run out of battery. Uh, run out of memory thing so there might be a cut soon. I also got a scheme of this gorgeous tweediness from Sparkle Duck. I knit a pair of lovely Sparkle Duck socks out of their tweed yarn last year and they're some of my favourite socks. I wear them very very often so I really wanted to get another scheme. This is their pebble base and it's unicorn field which I just thought was lovely. So I'm looking forward to knitting that. I might save it for winter time, but there's such lovely colours in there. And I also got a sock blank. This is from I Knit or Die. And it's sparkly. And it's polka dot or spotty. So I thought that would be really, really fun to knit up. And that's it. So, I'll show you the other things on Tuesday. Very fun. And of course the event bag, because I like to collect those. I also got this lovely little bag in a package from Mina. Mina Phillip on Instagram. She hosts the Knitting Expat podcast and she suggested to a few different people that um, they do swaps. So she asked me if I wanted to do a swap because she was coming to England to visit family so that would make postage much kinder because usually she lives in Bahrain so I don't even know what postage would be to there. So it was nice to take advantage of her being in this country to swap a little package of goodies. And in my package she sent me some Osterman Step and these lovely orange colours. This, I've wanted to try this yarn for ages, it's got the aloe vera and jojoba oil in it. And that just sounds so lovely, so it was great that she'd popped that in there for me. And there was also a skein of this mercerised cotton, which is really lovely and in a lovely purple colour. But it's so exciting to think that this came all the way from Bahrain. Very fun. And she sent me a lovely little bundle of minis, which I'm looking forward to using. 
and she wrote about what each of the minis are in a little envelope and there's a little I loved how she put everything together it's so cute there's a little envelope of tea which sounds so intriguing let me oops. it's ice wine tea doesn't that sound interesting so I'm gonna have to try a little bag of that. I kept it all together so that I could show you, but I can try some now. A little card. And she also sent me this. Oh, I think she's changing her Instagram name. It says Nina Makes on here. Oh, unless she's having two, one for the shop and one personal. I'm not sure. She also sent me this cute little sit marker, which is so adorable. She's opening a Etsy shop soon called Mina Makes. Minamakes.etsy.com. I don't think it's open yet, but because she's only just got back to Bahrain, so I think it will be opening soon and she'll be selling project bags like the one I'll show you in a second. And I'm guessing these little progress keepers. Oh, so cute. <clears throat> she also sent me this little sticky marker packet. Which I think is so cute. Oh, this is just my cup of tea, this. It's so fun, so cute, and just so whimsical. Perfect. And this is the little bag that she sent me. Isn't it so happy? Happy and cheerful. This is her medium size. So, yeah, she'll be having some of these in the shop. It's got a lovely handle, and that's what the lining is as well. Lovely little green zip. It's just so cute, and I'm excited to be able to use it now I've shown you. Because <clears throat> it's just so sweet. So thank you so much for swapping with me, Mina. It was a really, really lovely swap. And if you haven't seen Mina's podcast, it's the Knitting Expat podcast, and it's on YouTube. And it's a really lovely podcast. Mina hasn't been knitting long, but she's extremely prolific and, yeah, skilled already. And you sometimes get cat cameos from Hugo and Derek, who I desperately want to steal because they just, oh, I just need to cuddle them. They're adorable. They're Scottish fold cats and so cute. <laughs> So, yes, do check out Mina's podcast if you haven't seen it already. So, I have another couple of packages, but I don't know if the people wanted me to share them. So I'm going to get in touch with them and ask them and maybe show you them next time. I just realised I've got, got another little bag here. This is from I Knit Too, from Tilly Flop. This is a little card that you cut out and make into a cube and it's a what shall I do for the next 365 days cube. I just thought that sounded really fun so I'm going to do that. There's things like try a new skill and you can fill in the gap, spend more time away from the screen, try a new recipe every week, make something every day even if it's just a bed, keep a journal, photos, words, drawings, mementos and lists and start a club. Cake, book, wine, knitting, dining, sing singing and running. I just thought that was a really, really lovely card. And then I got this one, which I thought was hilarious. Mum and I were at the Tilly Flop stand and I was just in hysterics for quite a lot of the time. Her cards are so funny, but I love this one. If you can't read it, it says, I want to look into your eyes and tell you that I love you, but I've lost you in the yarn stash again. <laughs> so amusing. And I'm going to give that to David, obviously, and I don't know whether he's going to laugh or just nod and say, yeah, you could actually lose me in your yarn stash. <laughs> but I thought that was very, very good. So, I'm going to show the last thing today is our giveaway. This is the lovely little cute knitting bag from Luli. Shop Luli on Etsy and luli.co.uk 
and this is such a lovely bag. I took my, I've got one of this size as well, and I attached it to my handbag when we went to the knitting, to I Knit Fandango, and it just, it was perfect with a sock in, and yeah, it was just perfect for on the go. I really, really loved it. So this one is has been given to us by Lee to give away, which is very exciting. Thank you, Lee. So I'll open a thread, and if you'd like to come over, I was having a chat with Lee, and she said it would be fun if you s told us what the strangest place you have kept your knitting, the strangest receptacle, um, or most peculiar, or most unusual place you have kept your knitting. So yeah, come over and tell us about your the strangest place you've kept your knitting, if you would like to win this. We'll leave this open for two weeks, so I'll draw for winners on episode 32. But yeah, do come along and join in, because it's just such a cute bag and such a perfect size for out and about. Okay, well, I hope that episode was okay. It feels a bit strange to be recording again, and but I'm sure that I'm sure that will have gone next week, hopefully. So yeah, thank you so much for being here today. I really, really appreciate you watching, and thank you so much for. Uh, the messages you send me and lovely interactions I have with you it's it's really really lovely so I appreciate it thank you and I will look forward to seeing you next week so I hope you have a really really lovely week and I'll see you then bye <laughs>